It all came together, Christian. Oh! I knew having a cloth hanky would come in handy for more than just my giant schnoz. Yo! What is up, everyone? My name is Emilio, and this is Let's Roll Characters, the show, the only show, where my friend Christian and I roll characters for D&D 5th edition. Those characters are based on different sets of prompts and parameters, either that we come up with or that come from you, our fellow nerds. That's right. We are a couple of fledgling DMs, and we thought it would be cool to bring you our favorite part, your favorite part, everyone's favorite part of playing D&D, character creation. Yes, indeed. So, Christian, are you ready to do this? Yeah! Let's roll for race, class, background, gender! Let's roll characters! All right, roll me a D10 for race. D10 coming up. It's a two. Oh, okay. I think that we have our first post-pilot dwarf. Roll me a D12 for class. Three. All right, we have a dwarf cleric. Give me a d20 for background. Six. Okay, we have a dwarf cleric gladiator. Now give me a d4 for gender. Three. Okay, we have a non-binary character, Emilio. Oh. We have a dwarf cleric gladiator who is non-binary. Wow, Christian, what are your initial thoughts? So we have this dwarf who's non-binary and eventually becomes a cleric but has this gladiator background. I don't know, why don't we take a look at our ability scores here and kind of see where that takes us? Yes, indeed. Let's roll some ability scores. Get our competition back on track. And I have to up my cheating at dice game. <laughs> Oh, another 17. What do you know? <laughs> Whoa! Wow. I'm just rolling lucky 17s all the time. So let's start with strength. We're going to roll 4d6, drop the lowest, and see what we got. Okay. We're off to an awesome start with a 7 for strength. <laughs> oh my god! Oh man. I will say... I think we're going to have to go with an old character, which actually might be really sort of um, connected to a past life and then the current life type thing. Absolutely, yeah. And what, yeah, what kind of gladiator has seven strength? There's got to be a right. reason. No, I'm, well, I would think maybe back in the day they were really strong, but they're so old now that they are not. Okay, here comes my dex roll, which couldn't possibly be worse than yours. Roll it. Okay, we have a 13. Oh, not bad. Yeah, pretty dexterous for Dwarf. All right. Gladiator's got to have high constitution, right? They've got to be tough. <laughs> Christian, I think you're going to take this week. I rolled an 8. <laughs> oh, man! I, I really do think this is going to have to be an old character. I don't know how else we're going to be able to um, explain these terrible uh, constitution and strength rolls. Now, let's see. Let's hope that over time they have ac accumulated knowledge. Intelligence is... Oh, they dumb. Six. Has this person just been beaten around so much that their mind and body are completely broken? I think like yeah, they're gonna they're old and also maybe senile, but let's hope that their wisdom is really on point here. Okay, twelve. Okay, all right. So, not as wise as one might hope. Uh, not inversely wise to their strength and other um, sort of abilities. All right, let's see what we got for charisma. Have they really just become super charming over time? Oh, and they have. We have 11 plus 4, 15. Oh, man. So I've got some new ideas here. Well, I'm sorry to report. Christian has handed me another loss. <laughs> ha! 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 <laughs> 27 for me, 34 for Christian with this extremely unusual dwarf gladiator. 
Yeah, uh, it feels good to be back on the winning side of things. I'm, I'm just slowly crawling my way back up so uh, we can be at zero <laughs> together. Okay, well, so now we've got some basic characteristics here, but now we're going to have to take a look at the sub-race. And with the dwarf, of course, we have a couple options. We're going to be looking either at the mountain or the hill dwarf. So because this is a cleric, I think the wisdom score is going to be important. Plus, we've kind of played around with the idea of this being an older person. It makes sense that they would be more wise. I think we should go with uh, hill dwarf. Yeah, and the Mountain Dwarf comes with the strength. It actually comes with a plus two strength bonus, but I, I just don't see us going that direction with this character, so I really like the, the plus one wisdom. All right, so we've got our ability scores figured out. Now let's dig into the class a little bit. We need to take a look at proficiencies as well as the divine domain for this cleric. I've been imagining this, this cleric who's sort of a healer and they're a bit quirky. So I like the idea of using the medicine proficiency and then maybe pairing that with the life domain, which gives them all kinds of healing spells and things like that. Yeah, I, I think this is cool. And I, I find myself wondering if they sort of came up through the ranks of the gladiator pits and like lived, survived. And um, part of that was maybe making themselves useful uh, with healing, that kind of thing. So I really like medicine and I really like the life domain, but we do have a second proficiency. And because this one is so charming, I'm wondering if they are proficient with persuasion as well. They've sort of picked that up over the years. I think that this person is like a lovable weirdo. It's not like they're intentionally charming. They, they just have all these quirks and, and strange things about them that make them really lovable. So we've got medicine proficiency, persuasion proficiency, and we're going with the life domain, which is really all about healing. Okay, so we've got most of the groundwork here all set. Who is this dwarf and where did they come from? I want this dwarf to be some kind of, of medic who came up in the gladiator pits, but as a healer. I'm kind of imagining like a Patch Adams slash Doctor Who type of character, but in the body of a dwarf. I think that's amazing whether or not we go with that. I think that's amazing. I really like this idea of them being a healer all along maybe in the gladiator pits and maybe not actually a gladiator because let's say they've actually never been strong, right? They've mm -hmm. never been somebody who's good for the pits, but they were attracted to the gladiator pits to help people. And that I'm really curious about what is it that you think brought them to want to help those folks out. So they grew up a dwarf that wasn't strong. Uh, automatically, they wouldn't have fit in. Also, mm -hmm. you know, we've established that they are non-binary. So that might have been an additional barrier to them being kind of part of normal dwarven society. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, wherever these pits were, I mean, maybe it was a job opportunity. It, it, they just needed to make some pay they figured out that, you know, they're decent at this, but probably when they started out, they weren't so great, but nothing will sharpen your skills, like having to actually be in the middle of a fight and patch up some guy who's just been stabbed with a trident. I like that. And also, I don't think that they were necessarily very good at this or, or trained in it at all. They found this opportunity. They maybe even, maybe they even bent the truth a little bit in order to get the gig. And I think there's a lot of on-the-job training here, no actual sort of formal training. And over time, they, partly because they were so likable, they were able to make a living uh, on this. And then we do have to figure out, though, why the turn toward cleric? I could see them wanting to heal somebody and not being able to with their own skills and so needing to actually turn to the gods for power. I could see something dramatic happening in the gladiator pits that made them rethink all their life decisions. I like your thought about something bad happening, like maybe their lack of knowledge really did push them to their limits and they, they failed basically. And so maybe somebody they cared about died in the gladiator pits and then they decided to turn to um, religion and faith in order to actually become 
a real healer who could actually do good. This character is really starting to come together. I think we've got some really good ideas cooking up here. So we had a discussion about personality traits and ideals and went back and forth on a few different ideas. Ended up deciding to go with, for personality traits, uh, two choices. I know a story relevant to almost every situation. And nobody stays angry at me or around me for long since I can diffuse any amount of tension. Um, so Christian, can you tell us a little bit about how we came to those decisions? Yeah, so the storytelling one is really we've got this wizened dwarf who has seen a lot over their years of helping people in the pits and just being older and wiser. And so the storytelling makes a lot of sense and that's one of the ways that they connect with people too. And then with the anger piece, this is a very charismatic dwarf. They're quirky, they're fun, people love them. And so again, sort of connecting with people, being able to diffuse tension, that is really something that this dwarf is good at. Awesome. All right, and then ideal, we really went back and forth quite a bit and had a few different ideas and threw out a whole bunch of them. But we ended up finally deciding on the choice people. I like seeing the smiles on people's faces when I perform. That's all that matters. Yeah, and so, you know, we did almost go with a rodeo clown type situation, but then we thought we were going to have to come up with a whole lot more backstory for that. So we just decided to keep it simple, which is that they really appreciate the responses they get from people when they perform healing, is what we mean here as far as performing and so when they do their thing with folks and it's actually successful and they get that gratitude, it is hugely rewarding for them. And so that's where we get that particular ideal from. We also had some discussion about the bond and the flaw. And so bond, we chose, I would do anything for the other members of my old troop. Yeah, that seems like a, just a really obvious fit for this character. They came up in the pits with these other gladiators that's their essentially extended family. They see them as the most important people to them. And so they would really do anything for them. And that's really what led them on this path to becoming a cleric is that they couldn't help one of the members of their troop. Uh, and so they figured they had to, to do something different. Yeah, and by troop, we're meaning the gladiator folks. Okay, and then for flaw, we just thought we would throw in a fun one. And it is, I'm a sucker for a pretty face. What was our thinking on that one? They have to have some kind of flaw that seems fun. You know, we'll let we'll let you guys decide if you bring this character into your game how you want to play that out. But I think that that could be just an interesting quirk. Yeah, I think just you know, hey, we don't need to have a story for everything. <laughs> Do some role playing, people. All right, so it's coming together. We've got this really weird, quirky dwarf coming along. We got two more things to figure out before a recap. We've got the alignment, and we've got everyone's favorite part: their name. Start us off on alignment. I'm leaning chaotic good. I, I think they're definitely a good character. They're, they're all about helping their friends and, and the other gladiators. They become a cleric to make up for the fact that they couldn't help people. But I like the chaotic piece because I, I feel like they will do whatever it takes to, to do good. They don't care if it's under the law or not. If something is forbidden, if there was a magic spell that was outlawed by somebody, they wouldn't care. They would absolutely use that if it meant they could heal their friends. I agree. I really like Chaotic Good, and I like it also because this character is not driven by faith per se, not driven by devotion per se. It's really a means toward their own personal ends. And so I think that that Chaotic piece is good, even though they're becoming a cleric, which has a domain, I still think they're driven by their own sort of will, own sort of motivations. And so Chaotic Good makes a lot of sense to me. Name time! I thought about writing down random words that we say throughout this and seeing if any of them inspire me. Oh, yes! And I only wrote down one word because uh. I forgot. <laughs> and that word is overtime. Overtime! <laughs> So see what you can do with that, Christian. What do you got for me? Uh, overtime could be doable. We could even sort of like Latinize it or something. 
What about I, I'm, now? I'm playing with the word overtime. What about um, as a last name? Overtime. T y n e. Like a tine, like a fork. I don't know that it actually has any meaning in this case, but it could be like you know. Let's say they had a sort of normal dwarven first name like um, Gimli. We did Lord of the Rings a couple episodes ago. We're with not. Gla- we're not with- using Gimli. Okay, good. <laughs> By the way, I've switched over to like cloth hankies, and I'm I'm never going back. Oh my god, who are you? Well, you know what? First off, uh, tissues have plastics in them, which maybe you didn't know, which is like horrible. Um, and then the hankies—they're all from my wife's grandmother, so they're like floral and stuff, and I just love them. You're um, just as quirky as uh, Devlin Overtime Dwarf. Devlin. Well, I like Devlin, but also, you know, it could be floral cloth over time. <laughs> Devlin floral cloth. Devlin floral cloth. Oh, let's do that. I really like that. And I think maybe that's what they wear also when they're sort of running out to go and heal people. This beautiful sort of floral cloth. And that's their thing. Like Devlin floral cloth. Well, now we're absolutely going to have to include that entire conversation about our noses. <laughs> And your new love of hankies. I can't wait. Let's uh, let's hear about Devlin. Okay, so Devlin Floral Cloth is a hill dwarf with who is a cleric with a gladiator background, and they are weak, poor constitution, and they just did not fit into their clan's whole thing. And so they sought work elsewhere. And the first gig that sort of came up that appealed was to actually be a medic in for the gladiator pits. And so they did this for years. They had no training whatsoever, but they were kind of getting by on being charming and, you know, being sort of helpful in the most basic ways. But over the years and over the time of getting to know people and making very close friends, they had a friend who was actually in need of real healing. And when they tried to come in and do something about it, they failed utterly and it was a really kind of tough loss for them. And so Devlin then decided that what they should do and the only real path for them, because they didn't have the knowledge, they didn't have access to the training, was to turn to faith. And so they became a cleric so that they could actually heal people in the life domain. And so they are now sort of, with the years gone past, able to actually do healing for people. And that is where we start with Devlin Floral Cloth. Absolutely nailed it. Christian, do we have our character? Yeah, we do. And now so do you guys. And so if you would like to download Devlin Floral Cloth for your game, you can go ahead and click the link for the PDF in the description below. And as always, if you enjoyed Let's Roll Characters, please make sure to like and subscribe. And definitely leave a comment on the type of character that you'd like to see us bring to life in a future episode. Yes. And thanks for watching. Yeah. All right. Now go play some D&D. Right, yeah, yours, yours is just, yours is fine. It's a great nose. My nose is one that you could build a dynasty on.